Hey everybody, so this is a grow out tank for some Pseudomagill signifers, otherwise known as the Pacific Blue Eye. They're a type of rainbow fish. And this is a 20 high. Um, as you can see, there's not really a substrate in here, just some java fern, java moss, some val. And um, these, these baby fish hatched just really out of the java fern and java moss that I had in a tank with their parents. And I threw that, those plants in this tank. Uh, no heater, no filter, no air stone. And over the course of a couple weeks, they started to hatch. And here's what we have now, and they're doing great. So I'm going to go over how I add water to this tank. Uh, it's drilled with an overflow. Uh, when I put the fish in here, the tank was probably half full. Again, I just had plants in there. And what I do is every other day, I add just water out of the tap to this little, this little uh, hang-on breeder box. It's about a half a gallon and I add a half a gallon of water every other day to this 20 gallon, which is about 1 40th uh, or 2% uh, water change. Um, it essentially is just diluting the nitrates, bringing in fresh water uh, that will help the fish grow. Eventually as the tank fills, I'll continue to add that much water and we'll get a slight you know, dilution overflow so I pour that water and then you see it just works up all the detritus off the bottom. And that provides a lot of food uh, into the water column, little microcrustaceans and so forth for the fish. I then add uh, my ACCR Pro um, just to um, take out the chlorine and chloramines out of the water, even though it's just a small amount. Being this young and a small amount of water, I just on the safe side add just a little bit. Um, just a little sprinkle of that in there. So as you can see here, um, I've added an air stone here. These fish are, oh, probably almost six weeks old and um, they're doing great. I feed them microworms, uh, decapped baby brine shrimp eggs, some crushed flake, and then again, every other day, I add this water, which gets all those microcrustaceans, detritus up in the water column, and they will definitely find food off of that and find food on all of the plants. So I've been doing that now, like I said, for about six weeks. And um, there's probably 20 or so, maybe 30 in there. They're very small, as you can see. Rainbow fish traditionally are, but they are big enough to take crushed flake and decap baby brine shrimp eggs and obviously certainly microworms. And they, they love all that and they do a pretty good job. So that's where we're at. everybody, welcome back to the Biotopes. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the baby fish in this tank here. Uh, these are Pseudomagill signifers, or Pacific Blue Eyes. It's a um, type of rainbow fish, and they are from really the east coast of Australia. Uh, and um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history on how these babies came to be, how I bred them, spawned them, and how we're growing them out. Um, eventually, by the end of the video, hopefully, I think we're gonna add a small sponge filter to this tank, and uh, we'll get started. Thanks for tuning in. So this is my current colony of Sunamagill signifers, Pacific Blue Eyes. Uh, they're currently in my 20 high rack. Before they were moved in here, they were in a different 20 high in their own tank. Currently there's eight, four males, four females. 
Originally I had 11. Um, I think I had five males and six females. So we've lost uh, some here or there, um, either due to just old age. Okay, so yeah, so we've got our eight signifers in here. Also got one ghost shrimp and some snails. I think there's a small colony of blue ram's horn snails and there's you know some pond snails and just a general snail population nothing too much nothing too big anyway so in the original 20 gallon tank these fish um, were just really by themselves with some ghost shrimp once in a while and snails eventually when we moved out here to the fish room obviously the the overall plan was to eventually move them into this rack so i had to clean out that tank clear all the plants and everything and you know meanwhile through the last i don't know year or so that i've had these you'd occasionally find a baby up at the surface of the water um kind of living amongst the water sprite or um, you know moss java fern that type of thing it wouldn't last that long and they were so small it was really tough to catch them out without tearing the tank apart so i knew they were spawning you'd see spawning behavior but um, you know never had any babies kind of make it long term so eventually when i had to move these fish out of this tank and get ready to transfer them, drill these tanks, all that kind of thing. I just threw all the plants into a tank and just let it be, knowing that, you know, there's probably eggs on the plants. Let's see what happens. It wasn't really my intention uh, to purposely do that, to, you know, grow them out or breed them, but just thought, let's see what happens. So that brings us to this tank up here. So this is the tank here, that java moss, all this java fern. Um, right now there's some val and there's an Amazon sword in there, but um, it was really just java moss and java fern. Just let that be in this 20 gallon. Right now the 20 is full of water to the top. Sorry for the light. Um, but originally it was about half full. I did not really clean the tank. Um, I just kind of let it be. There's no substrate to speak of in this tank. It's a little bit of kind of leftover gravel as I was pulling plants out. And uh, just let it be. There was at that time no heater, no air stone. It was just plants, water, and light. And what had happened over time is that we started getting these uh, signifer babies. And um, we're probably, see, early June was that time when I moved these plants in here. And we are in middle of August now. So it's been what, uh, you know, two and a half months, just about. So that's, you know, they're slow growers. They're very small um, as babies. And, you know, signifers, Sometimes the eggs will take two weeks to hatch. So I've got currently fish at different sizes in here. I've got some smaller ones. I've got some larger ones. So, but they've, they're all the same within, you know, a couple of three weeks of each other. So that's where we're at with this tank. Now, the way we got to this place in this tank is I would, feed three times a day. I do microworms in the morning. I do, um, you know, and then every other day I'll do either some decapped baby brine shrimp or what I'll do is I will put a half of gallon of just tap water into this tank and um, what that does is it 
you know, originally this was maybe half full. Over time, I've added a half a gallon every other day to this. What that's done is, A, it's diluted the, you know, any uh, nitrates in this water. It's also stirred up all the detritus um, and microcrustaceans that might be on the plants or in the, in the bottom of the tank, and that's food. Um, especially when you've got small babies like these, these rainbows are, uh, these signifers. Uh, they feed a lot on those microcrustaceans when they're first uh, born. So that would be a dual purpose, which was really helpful. And then I'll do, you know, a crushed flake every other day, but pretty much microworms, decat baby brine shrimp eggs, crushed flake, and just new water to dilute the um, nitrates and stir up the uh, substrate and the microcrustaceans so that uh, the baby fish could kind of find them easier in the water column. So that's really what's happened over time on this tank. And, you know, as you can see, it's, I've probably got, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 to 30. I'm going to try to find a good shot here for you. I'm sorry for the light. Um, but, yeah, this is what the tank looks like. They often will hang up, hang out up here at the top of the water column. So you can see there, if we can focus in, um, this here is a decent sized fish. And um, it's really been easy to grow. Eventually, like I said, I put a heater in here. It'll run in the upper 70s, low 80s. And um, added just a air stone just to keep the water circulation and oxygenation up. Um, but other than that, that's it. I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to test the water, see where we're at. And I think it's time I'm put a small sponge filter in this tank just to help with filtration and um, hopefully you know get these guys going a little bit faster. Again, what I do with my water change currently is I'll add a half a gallon, which is getting about you know two percent water change um, every other day. This is an overflow system, so all we're doing is kind of diluting the water that's in the tank with fresh water and um yeah it's been a lot of fun to see these guys kind of grow up and um it's been super easy it's something you definitely can do and um uh, yeah it's been a lot of fun so i just want to give everybody an update on that you know sometimes people are a little bit hesitant at trying to breed egg scatterers but these signifers have been really easy you just need really two tanks and a bunch of plants and that's about it so all right we're gonna test this water and uh, maybe upgrade the filtration here so stay tuned I've got an API uh, freshwater master test kit and we're gonna set, test our pH and our nitrate level today also test the temp check the temp So I like the, the master test kit. It does take a little bit longer, say, than a test strip. Um, I do find it's really consistent and relative accurate measurements. Um, I do want to try some different uh, types of test strips, but um, just to kind of test those things, the couple I've tested or tried out aren't great, so I'm using this currently. So I also keep track of all of the parameters for all these tanks and record every time I do test. So um, last time I uh, measured this tank, it was about three weeks ago. The pH was 7.6, the nitrates were 20. It was at 81.9 degrees. And um, I know at that point I did add some FERTs, just some nitrogen 
for uh, the just to increase some of the plant growth. So today I'm going to kind of test against those numbers. So we'll test our pH first. Because I was at 7.6, I'm going to test in the high range. And uh, because 7.6 is the top of the low range, which I tested last time. So that's five drops. We'll do a quick shake. And then this is reading really at seven, really 7.4. So bottom of the high range, top of the low range. So I'm going to write 7.4. Then we'll start our nitrate test. <clears throat> this is the more involved. So we're doing 10 drops here of the first solution. Give that a little shake. And we're we'll set a timer for five minutes. So stay tuned. All right, so I just got done finishing up the nitrate test for our baby signifer tank. We're still at 20 nitrates, which tells me that the plants are doing a good job of really filtering the water and pulling that up, a lot of that out. So the nitrates have not gone up in three weeks. What I'll do today is I will, um, I'm going to add a small sponge filter. I'll show you what I have. This is actually what I used to use in my, the old 75. Um, it's just your typical, I think it's an aqua top. What I've done is I've cut out the, you can see that the bottom of this space used to be like this. Um, took that out, cut out the little piece so that I could drop a, uh, air stone with a little piece of tubing down into there that connects on boom done I'm gonna add a sponge I've got the sponge um, currently down in my rainbow cyclic tank I'm um, just keeping the cycle so I'll grab that out of there add that to this and then hook this up to the pump that's currently running off of um, really it's just a little kind of USB air pump um, it's running this uh, current baby uh, signifer tank, and um, we'll get that set in. Once I've got that set in, what I'll do is I will add a just a, a half gallon of water. Um, again, dual purpose. We're kind of circulating the water in the water column, and uh, you know, providing some more uh, food, uh, getting that food in the water column for the babies. Um, diluting some of the current nitrates. I will then add some uh, FERTs. What I use is just some nitrogen. I'll show you that here. It's the Acrovitro uh, synthesis for plants and um, it's just um, organic nitrogen basically. So I just add that to it and um, just a very little bit. It goes a long way, and that should be it for this tank. All right, see where we go. Okay, so I added a half a gallon of fresh water. Um, I don't any longer put any of the ACCR in there. It's just a small percentage. I don't feel like we have a whole lot of chlorines in our water anyway. Um, really, you know, isn't enough to have any effect um, on that small kind of dilution. But there's our sponge filter there. And um, yeah, I mean, the fish are doing great. So I will say that this uh, tank tested at 75.9. Um, again, we're at 7.4 pH and a 20 nitrate. Um, I will say because we've got a lot of tanks, I don't usually change the water um, a great deal unless we're in that kind of 40 nitrate level or higher, uh, which we rarely get to. Um, when it does, I'll start to do a, a decent water change or dilution. But um, yeah, this tank's going really great. You can see um, kind of 
the suspended material in the water column right now just because of the added water just to kind of break some things up and get things moving. I'm going to try to zoom in here for a little bit and see if we can, you can see those fish are just picking off the micro crustaceans that they find. Um, really, really fun project, not difficult at all. And I think anybody can do it. Do you have any questions about anything, this part that I did in spawning, breeding, or raising things up, please let me know. Uh, if you've ever worked with the signifers, please let me know what's worked for you. But super easy fish to spawn. And um, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks so much.